Hey there people, Too Tall here again. Got some goodies in the mail today. Wanted to share them with you. And then, uh, uh, I'm not sure what I'm gonna call this video. This might end up being uh, Husqvarna 288 part two, um, because some of the stuff that came in today from uh, Wolf Creek is the 288 cylinder and piston kit. Base gasket, spark plug. I'm not sure how long these have been out, but for at least a couple months uh, or maybe longer on these new stickers. Pretty cool. Also got a pen with it, which I'll put to good use. Paper ring, sear clips, wrist pin, and D cylinder. And in here we got some wrist pin bearings. We got one for this saw, and then I picked up a an extra for the uh, for the 70 cc class. This is what that is right there. That fits 268, 272, uh, 365, 372, and there's our 288 wrist bearing. Substantially bigger. I'm going to set this stuff to the side for a minute. We'll be back to it here in a moment. I just want to share some of the other goodies here. In preparation for the upcoming spring tree season. I've already box this off camera and was playing around with some of it. This came from uh, Wesper. Some stickers. Always like stickers. Maybe we'll pull those out and see exactly what we got here in a second. So let's start with the friction saver. I got a I have a I believe it's a four or a six foot uh, adjustable friction saver like this. This is a 12 foot. Um, I wanted to have a backup and I got the extra long one because uh, this this can serve as a, a multi-purpose rig. I can use this as a as a lanyard, a uh, you know a throw, whatever. Comes with the uh, presser cord with ring. For those of you who aren't familiar with how this works, you run your line in a double line system. You run your, say this is my climb line, I'm going to run this through from the small end. When I get back down to the ground I have this still up in the tree, I hook a ring, snap in a ring right here, and I pull my line back through. And that'll pass through the large eye drop out and get caught right here in the small and then just boomerang this whole apparatus right out of the tree and land at your feet. These are uh, called the B-line. These are uh, abrasion resistant, heat resistant cord. I forget what the uh, tensile strength was on these but they're very substantial. Uh, these are just barely long enough to uh, do like a climb heist uh, friction knot, which I'm fond of. And I always believe in redundancies. And this is to replace the one on my previously mentioned uh, four foot adjustable friction saver. It's a few years old and it's getting chafed pretty bad. It's time to retire it. So that's, that's for and This is my 
Crusic loop, just multi-purpose loop for whatever. I will demonstrate real quick. Well, basically, it will end up looking just like that. So you just uh, pass it through itself three times. Keeping each loop to the up side. And there you have it. Multi-directional. Totally adjustable. Let's take a look at the stickers Westper sent us. Iron Street is the uh, rope splicing division within Westper. Oh, that's kind of cool. You got to kind of look at it for a minute to see what all it's saying. Bifrost. That's a, a rope brand. Westford.com. That's a tiny one. And there are several of those. I guess I must not have matured much past the third grade because I still love the stickers. That's a nice one. That one you've already seen. Already seen that. Yeah, okay. Yep, we've seen them all. I'll just stuff these all in one sack. Save one of these baggies for nuts and bolts and whatnot. Alright, let's get this out of the way. I don't know if you guys have seen that floating around on the table. Here, coming up, I think I'm going to do a video on some knives. Because uh, Too Tall is not just about the chainsaws. This is one that I, I made 100% right here in the shop. Forge the blade. Fit the, well, I guess it would you call that a hilt of some sort? That's uh, some uh, elk antler. Actually, just finished that up last week. I've had the blade sitting around oh, in my office there for about a year and uh, just hadn't finished it out yet. All right, back to the 288 parts. So first thing I want to do, well first thing first, create a new page here in the book. It took me a while you know, to get myself trained to uh, document um, and uh, I can think 10 man, probably more than any, um, that, uh, that I watch on YouTube uh, that have helped me get in this habit. Um, you know, and now that I've mentioned Tin Man, I just, I, I have to say, Tin Man, I love you, I love your videos, and you got no idea how it makes me feel, how honored I am to know that you've been watching my videos, and some of the comments that you've been uh, given, um, it means a lot, and for those of you that might stumble upon my videos, and you're not familiar with Tin Man, you gotta check him out. He is the man, as far as I'm concerned, when it comes to uh, porting and just just a generally good-natured, good dude. Um, all right, enough of that. Um, so, 288 XP. And we're gonna start out by weighing the piston. See, weighing grounds. 
Yes, we are. So, Meteor Piston, 288. 92 grams. So, first things first is I will dress up this uh, piston, take care of all the uh, casting ridges, open up these windows around these corners, and then we'll weigh it again and see what we've gained. I'm not intentionally trying to lighten it a bunch it's just kind of a byproduct and uh, some will say that lightening it is a good thing um, I would tend to agree with that there's some out there that uh, would disagree but it's how it is it's always going to be that way so where's my stool One of the most important things in grinding I have found is to get comfortable. And I usually like to use like a screwdriver or something. To prop things on. And I had a rag around here. When I'm doing a cylinder. I I'll use the handle of that screwdriver and set that like that so it's on an angle. I can get in there. Okay, I gotta grab my bits. I should have had those out already. All right, let's pick our poison here. I think this is what I'm pretty fond of right there. Oops, yeah, throw it on the table, it's good for him. Some lubrication. start this will start on the inside here portion of the piston skirt out any more than I got to I'm just just taking off that that ridge see that
touch these corners. Get rid of those. And this is where, depending on which side you're on and which direction your bit's turning, I've had trouble with it wanting to jump on me.
Yeah, I came real close right there to jumping over and making a boo-boo. You notice how, in this case, I'm using that screwdriver to kind of post myself. checking the chamfer on the top here. These meteors usually come pretty well chamfered. I don't know that I really need to hit that anymore. Hmm. All right, now we'll open up those windows. Kind of look at them, get a game plan here. Don't want to really try to avoid, you know, going inward there too much. Definitely got some room to go down. I won't really mess with that. All right. Probably about 30 thousandths I can take here. I might take a little bit there.
So far. So I think that's about as much as I'll go. So now I just got to make the other three match. So many chips built up in there, I gotta blow them out so I can see what I got going on. About halfway there. We are 31 minutes. 31 minutes in. Well, I tell you what, guys, uh, I guess we'll call this video good uh, for now, and uh, when we reconvene, um, I'll have this thing finished. We'll get a weight on it, and we'll go from there. So, uh, until then, you all take care wherever or whenever you might be. Bye.